Hello everyone, we are here on the grounds of both the estate and the burial site of Old Hickory, also known as Andrew Jackson, seventh president of the United States. Now, we are going to be giving you guys a tour of the estate kind of on the outside. We're not allowed to film inside. This is his house. It's known as the Hermitage. Um, Jackson was one of the, he's one of the last presidents that was actually buried on his estate grounds. And also we're gonna go see his grave scream his name for smash in honor of Jackson so we're gonna honor his life here so now Jackson was a pretty rough man all right um, regardless of what you might think about him because you know I have my opinions as well uh, he was he was kind of torn up from a really young age Jackson was born in 1767 he served as president from uh, 1829 to 1837 he served two terms um, when he was born, his father had died three months, three weeks before he was born uh, from a logging accident. Um, he was born in North Carolina. Um, when he was 13, uh, he fought in the Revolutionary War in 1781 and was captured by the British uh, as a 13-year-old kid. Um, him and his brother Robert Jackson were um, captured there. They both contracted smallpox at a very young age. His brother actually died of it while imprisoned. Um, and while he was in prison, he was ordered to shine one of the British officer's shoes, and he refused to, and he slashed him with his sword. And from that moment forward, Jackson hated the British, and he would get his revenge years later in the War of 1812 at the Battle of New Orleans. Now, Jackson, some people say, most people say, uh, he was the first president of the common man. Because when he was elected president in 1828, he was the seventh president. The first six presidents from Washington through John Quincy Adams were pretty much, you know, prestigious statesmen. Jackson really had not much political experience. He was uh, a senator from Tennessee, from the newly formed state of Tennessee uh, in 1797, but he only served six months. Um, but Jackson really became famous and got his name known. He became a household name after the Battle of New Orleans in 1815. During the War of 1812, that's where he really got um, known. And so he ran for president in 1824 for the first time. Now, this was a rough election because it was a four-way race between Andrew Jackson, John Quincy Adams, Henry Clay, and William Crawford. Now, Jackson won the popular vote in that election, but nobody got a majority. So the House had to pick the president. And they chose John Quincy Adams as president because, you know, he was, you know, had a whole career in Congress. So Jackson called that the corrupt bargain election. Now, four years later in 1828, Jackson came back and kicked Adams' butt for re-election and became president. Uh, he served for two terms, obviously. Um, now, Jackson, was a, he was a rough son of a gun, if I say the least. Um, during his earlier life, um, he, was a, he engaged in a bunch of duels, and he was in a duel with a man named Charles Dickinson. And Dickinson fired first, shot Jackson in the chest, Jackson got back up and shot and killed Dickinson. And he left that bullet in his chest the rest of his life. And he's probably buried, he's buried right over there. So, what a, what a, what a tough day. The burial site's right over here. Site, so I think we can walk back here in a little bit. We'll talk more about it over here. United States politics kind of took a shift. When he was elected, um, like I said, he was the first president of the common man, pretty much, because he had not much political background becoming president. The only reason he became president was because people knew him for his military prowess. Well, he kind of shifted the way American politics worked in the era of his presidency is known as Jacksonian democracy. Um, he was president, he took office in 1829. He was actually the first president um, to be sworn in on the east wing of the Capitol building. Uh, every president from Jackson to Jimmy Carter was inaugurated on that wing of the Capitol, and he was the first one to be on there. Um, he took office in 1829. Uh, his vice president at the time, he had two separate vice presidents during his term. His first one was John C. Calhoun, who had previously served as Quincy Adams as vice president, but he kind of went against him toward the end and got on Jackson's ticket. Uh, for the victory in 1828. Calhoun and Jackson were not, they had a lot of trouble getting things worked out with each other. And by the time Jackson uh, was reelected in 1832, he picked younger statesman from New York, Martin Van Buren, to be his 
uh, running mate for that election, which he did win. Uh, Jackson was the last president to serve two terms until Ulysses S. Grant, two full terms. Yes, Lincoln was elected twice, but he was assassinated just uh, beginning of his second term. So during Jackson's presidency, one of the main things he's remembered for is, and one of the greatest impacts he had on the country was the Indian Removal Act in 1830, where uh, they passed a law um, removing all the, the Cherokee Indians from Native Americans from uh, the Southeast US. This was a very controversial act and the Supreme Court had already declared it unconstitutional, but Jackson was able to gain the support of Congress to get the bill to be passed. And so that happened very controversial. Basically, if the president in Congress is on board to pass a bill, the judicial branch really has no power at all in declaring any law. Yes, the Jackson Family Cemetery right here. Um, extended beyond those he embraced during his lifetime. This is Andrew Jackson the third. Graduated from West Point, 1857. These are kind of his later family. Like I said, uh, when he was born, a lot of his family members died when he was really young, and they're all buried back where he was from. All right, so we're going to go around to the grave. We're going to do the honor. This is what it looks like from the front view. There's a sign right here. Pretty cool. Uh, he died in 1845. He died on June 8th, 1845, age 78 years. Pretty good for 1840s. Faithful servant of Andrew Jackson, age 98 years, 1901. He was born in uh, 1803. So this is one of uh, Jackson's servants, faithful servants right here that um, I guess worked on the estate. On the estate so. That's pretty cool. His wife died in 1828, the year he was elected president. Um, so she was never actually first, she never actually served as first lady. Like I said, during Jacksonian democracy, there was a real shift in American politics. It was pretty turbulent. Uh, basically, if you were engaged in American politics at that time, you were either a Jacksonian or an anti-Jacksonian. You weren't a Whig or a Democratic Republican. Your political parties was a Jacksonian or anti-Jackson. So that's how much of a shift that we had. Andrew Jackson for smash! the garden because I know a lot of people appreciate the garden tours so then I had request to show more of the gardens so I'm gonna do that this is a little monument about his wife here Rachel Donaldson Jackson daughter of Colonel John Donaldson a revolutionary soldier hmm, interesting so it's cool because he's buried in like this little garden section I like how they have um, his own little his servant has a, a grave here so that's pretty neat that's pretty neat The bitter nut hickory. That's what this tree is called. I wonder if he got the he got the nickname Old Hickory from um, the Battle of New Orleans. Because like I said, that's where he got famous in 1815. He was commanding general at that battle, defeated the British. Um, he finally got his revenge on the British in 1815. Also during Andrew Jackson's uh, second term and the end of his first term. Uh, he dealt with what is known as the nullification crisis. Um, back during the, uh, the presidency of John Quincy Adams, uh, they passed a tariff known as the Tariff of Abominations, um, which kind of favored the North um, because they had all their factories there. And it made um, Southern plantation owners, which mainly grew cotton, um, it made it very unaffordable for them. And a lot of people in the South were not happy. Um, and so South Carolina, the state of South Carolina, even threatened to secede from the Union. Uh, 30 years before they did. So this could have started the Civil War. Andrew Jackson, being the military-minded man that he was, he threatened to send an army down to South Carolina to put down the rebellion. Um, so he did convince uh, Congress to pass a bill, and he passed off on the bill uh, to make it so that the U.S. would be militarily involved if uh, South Carolina were to secede. So that did stop him from seceding and prevented the Civil War another 30 years down the line. Um, so that happened 
Also, Jackson was strongly opposed to the creation of the Second National Bank Charter, which took place in the early 1830s. And that is ultimately why he is on the $20 bill today. Um, so that's kind of cool. Jackson was, like I said, he was a tough guy. Um, he's one of the first presidents to suffer an assassination attempt. Uh, a man uh, went up to shoot him and there was like a one in 10,000 chance that his revolver misfired and it did. Jackson was like an older guy during the later half of his presidency. But once the gun misfired, Jackson went and beat the guy with his cane. So that was pretty incredible right there. Like I said, he kept that one bullet from the duel in his chest the rest of his life. So it's pretty crazy. We're, gonna, we got, we're doing a uh, tour of the mansion here. So we're gonna go do that. I don't think you're allowed to take pictures, sadly, but we're gonna go check it out. I'll tell you guys what I think so, um, afterwards. Jackson uh, first bought this property in 1804, um, and he, he and his wife lived right there for about 17 years. They lived in that long cabin. It was Tennessee. Almost nobody lived in Tennessee back then. We're just outside of Nashville. I don't know if I said that, but that's where this hermitage is. He built the original one in 1821, uh, and then he did a renovation in 1831 during his presidency. Um, his wife sadly died just after he was elected in 1828. So 1837, he made the final revisions. This is what it looks like today. 1837 is when he left office as president, so he came back here uh, after he left, and he lived the rest of his life here the next eight years when he died in 1845 in the bed upstairs that we actually saw. Um, one interesting thing in there was Jackson actually wore like size seven shoes. He was six foot one, very thin guy. He was 140 pounds, so I thought that was interesting. Um, another thing that I forgot to say that I think is funny, I, something reminded me in it because we looked in his study, one of his rooms where he did all his work, political work and things like that. There was a bird cage in there. The guy said it was a replica, but Jackson famously owned a parrot that he taught how to swear. And apparently at Jackson's funeral in 1845, the parrot, the parrot was like cussing up a storm and they had to escort the parrot out of the funeral. That was actually, that actually happened. So that's kind of a funny story. <laughs> I completely forgot to say that until that, that reminded me of it. And Jackson also had no biological children. He had two adopted sons. One of them died at 16, and his other son was Andrew Jackson Jr., which makes sense because I was confused because Andrew Jackson's father, who died before he was born, he was also named Andrew Jackson. So I'm like, why wouldn't his son be Andrew Jackson III? It was an adopted son. That's why it was Jr. So you got to think, when he's buying this place in 1804, you got to think of how much a wilderness Tennessee probably is in 1804. Tennessee became a state, I think, in 1796, but back then you only needed about 60,000 people to become a state. So it's not like people lived here much. So these are all original log cabins. You can tell these are over 200 years old. Maybe, two, maybe 220. That's quite the upgrade. Quite the upgrade. Yeah, it's true. Quite the upgrade. Got to admit. This is the back side of the mansion. He's buried over there in the garden garden right behind the log cabin here. So right there on the white fence, that's the burial location. All right guys, so that is gonna conclude the burial site and estate tour of the Andrew Jackson. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye! Wah!